From the Woodshed, a casual conversation with Chase Morrill and Ryan Eldridge from Kennebec Cabin Company, the team that inspired the hit show Main Cabin Masters. From the Woodshed is brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp, trust the quality. By Hero Media Arts, connecting small business with new customers. And by Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Now, from the Woodshed Studios at KCC Headquarters in Manchester, Maine, it's Chase and Ryan. From the Woodshed, I'm Chase Morrill. With me, as always, Ryan Eldridge and Maggie Morrill. Hey, everybody. Hello. We're here to talk about all things Maine, all things cabins, all things Maine cabins related. And today, our guest is Audie Arbo. She is from the LUPC, Land Use Planning Commission. So we've got a lot of questions for her. And we you Lots know, of questions. I don't think it gets more Maine and more cabin-y than LUPC. You can find us at KennebecCabinCompany.com, MaineCabinMasters.com, our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube whoa, channel. Whoa. Our new TikTok, oh, TikTok channel. And our time is impeccable. <laughs> check out our online store at shop.kennebeccabincompany.com. We always want to thank our sponsors, Hammond Lumber Company, the official building material supplier of Kennebec Cabin Company, Nelma, Northeast Lumber Manufacturing Association, Hero Media Network, and Kennebec Savings Bank. Holy crap. TikTok? I, this is, it's, what TikTok? Is it what TikTokin? Do you fall? Yeah. <laughs> do I follow kind of a cabin company? Do you follow so. do you follow things on TikTok? Yep. No. Yes. But that's what it's called following. You follow them. You're not ticking. You don't like it. You well, you do you like it. it. You don't ring a bell. Jesus Christ. I thought hey, I thought hey, watch I, your language. <laughs> oh yeah. <geez. laughs> you made her swear. That's a first. <laughs> um Well, isn't TikTok in the news now because of like spying on us and they might ban it? Yeah. Well they're They've said that like four times. No, they're regulating it from all government-issued computers and phones and stuff. Which, I mean, that's fair enough. Do you really need to be TikToking on your LUPC phone? We'll have to ask. Adam. Who's it? Who's the TikToker? Like, is it on one phone that we're all gonna like TikTok to? <sighs> TikTok. We need to stop. Let's play some TikTok. Go. <laughs> really sad. I was probably doing Instagram. Like, I, like okay, I can do Facebook and Instagram, and I'll do a less than marginal, good, okay job, and. You just can't keep up. No, nope, neither on TikTok. All right, let's do it. Wah, 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 so what do we do? do you hit the bell. What like, was that? What do you say? That's my TikTok dance. Oh, we gonna dance? <laughs> okay, please, please don't. Just go follow the Kennebec Cabin so Company TikTok account. So I was just down account. in Phippsburg, looking at some cabins. Nice. And I was following GPS, and it took me down this road, and it turned to dirt. And I must have been 10 miles on dirt roads crisscrossing down in there. One of those peninsulas? I don't even know where I was, but at one like it definitely was a road that had not been plowed all winter. I'm dropping into four wheel drive, like going through. Did you get nervous at some point? Yeah, absolutely. I hate that. And I'm like, where the heck like am I? And I still have no idea where I was. And I was shocked that they had that just miles and miles of forested area, nothing around down in that area. So right, right before you get like going down the peninsula. I haven't yeah. been down there so long, I can't remember. But you, uh, you remember? Um, I guess I don't really even know. Was Sab Sabino Cove? What was the name yeah, of that? Yeah, part? I remember Sabino. I ended up going that way and then cutting across. But it's amazing how long those peninsulas are. And of course, it was. I was trying to find the one that Jake's family friend. I'm like, of course, this is where I'm ending up. <laughs> Life's an adventure, with Jake. In it, right? Yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> like I think Maine has what three thousand miles of coastline, just in and out. So it's some crazy number in and out. But we've worked in jobs where like you're down on one point and to get the other point. Oh yeah. As the crow flies, it might you you can throw a baseball. You probably but, see it. Yeah, take an hour to go up and down. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Unless you're in good old Harpswell. I love Harpswell. Yeah, that was fun. Town offices right there, dumps right there. <laughs> didn't have to leave. Perfect. Perfect. Maggie, those are things we look for later in life. I was just confused what the point of that story was. <laughs> there was no point of that story. <laughs> Usually that. <laughs> oh, well, I did, no, there was because we're having um, LUPC on and they deal with unorganized territories. And here I thought that they're, you know, coastal, everything would be organized, right. you know, close together. But nope, I easily could have gotten lost. They're did stuck up. So did you find it? Nope. <laughs> I gave up. I'm like, it was ridiculous. <laughs> it's amazing some of those jobs, like you'll drive for 45 minutes. You know, like if the job was right, they'd be fine, but it's another 20 minutes going yeah. down a camp road that kills you. Yeah. And again, there's all these different fingers and inlets that you never even knew were there. Maps. You need, you need a real map. You should have made your mother Stop. proud. No. Next, next time I'm bringing Jake with me. 
<laughs> Field trip. Yep. We had a good taste of summer, uh, spring, 50. You know, it was nice last couple of days. And then right back to cold and wet and dreary today. Yep. So I was thinking this um, yesterday when I was lying on the couch because I messed my back up. Like, it's amazing how 50 feels coming out of winter as opposed to going in. Yep. It's just night and day. It's so you couldn't get that feeling in the fall. It's true. But I'm so sick of cold fingers in the morning. Like, that's what gets me. Have you checked your circulation out? Do you have cold fingers? I mean, I wouldn't say they're... What do you keep your heat on? You're In my house? Yeah. Cold. 60? 60? No, it's just, in, you know, in the morning... You guys are tough. Before you're going... Yeah, I know. <laughs> Don't... Sensitive subject. Sensitive subject. You know what? In two years, you'll have your own door room. You can have that as hot as you want. It'd be awesome. <laughs> We're at 67. I thought that was cold. No. Yeah. Makes you tough, though. It does. Hmm. Apparently, it doesn't allow good circulation. No. Yeah, that's probably why. <laughs> Wear your gloves to bed. <laughs> and you've been boiling sap. Yep, I boil again this weekend. It's still it's been spotty how it's been running. So so some days temperatures are perfect. It'll run a bunch. It can sit for a while, and yep. other days it won't run at all. Yeah, like today. Well, no, it was above freezing today, so it'll probably run for the next few weeks. It's just gonna pour out of there. Pour out of those trees. To the point you'll be over it. Yeah. Now, is there someone like you can, if you have extra sap and you don't want to boil it, you can give it to somebody? Uh, you should start a market, sap marketplace. Sap is delicious. <laughs> I love sap. But it doesn't keep for very long. So if it gets warm, it gets cloudy. It's done. And like, you know, transporting liquids is never easy. No. It doesn't matter what liquid it is, it's going to slosh around. and Especially if you're under 21 and get in trouble for it. Are you? Uh... That's the first ticket I ever got. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Stop right hey, there. We're honest around here, okay? I, I made a mistake. Yeah. Well, so I went home and told Ashley. I guess Ashley was in here before last week's podcast and with, working with Taylor when she set that up. And I told her what I guessed, and I, she was so unimpressed. With what? It, to be fair, it was really bad. The oh, taste. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, were yeah. like. I don't think my taste. I don't is even bad. like maple syrup, and I feel like I, I could have done better than that. But I overthink it too. I'm like, well, maybe, maybe there's a trick. Maybe they put this one there, or maybe this one's supposed to. I don't. There are no, I, I can't. No tricks to <laughs> that one. <laughs> okay, my, my taste buds stink. Yep. You're working on it. You're working on yeah. it. I thought they were. Better we'll than do the test. Though. We'll do the taste test again next year and see if the light therapy yes. has worked. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Can we taste test ice cream sometime, please? Yes. Like, oh, how? We don't have. How much, would we don't you have, have to taste we gotta, test that? We'll just get it from different places. I just we go to Field of Choice. We should do that though. Yeah. yeah. All right. Field trip. Okay. Fielder's trip. Fielder's trip. Guys, you're crazy. I, we're all over the place today. Yeah. It's spring. We can be. Yeah. Right. It's got that good energy. Look, light out. Yeah. <laughs> Plants are starting to shoot up. Yeah. I mean, I, last week I walked out of here and it's like it was light out and it was still gonna be light out for an hour and a half. Like when we started this, four fifteen is dark. Yeah. Yeah. And you go home I right to bed. Cleaned the bed of my truck out yesterday because it was beautiful weather. I found a rotten pumpkin in the back, so you know how long it's been since I cleaned my truck. <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> I can't laugh. I'm I'm becoming you slowly. Sometimes that was, you that find was... snacks in your dad's truck, though. Oh yeah. That, I mean, but the pumpkin was like down at the bottom, so I know it just got oh. cold, and I just started throwing more and more and more on top of it. <laughs> and then it snowed, iced right in, and there it stayed. Of course, the warmest day he gets it out. That must have been nice. <laughs> well, on that note, let's think about how that pumpkin looked. And um, we're going to take a short break, and we're going to see you after this video. Renovating or building new, you'll find a wide selection of high-performing, energy-efficient, and beautiful windows and doors at Hammond Lumber Company. Your Hammond sales representative will walk you through the showroom displays and help you choose options to create a personalized, custom look. Free in-home measurement is available, and Hammond can deliver your order from any of their locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Bring your vision and enjoy better light and added security and energy savings with quality windows and doors from Hammond Lumber Company. And we are back with our guest, Audi Arbo. Hi. How are you? I'm excellent. And Hi, you are the Land Use Planning Commission's Permitting and Compliance Division Manager. Yep. All right. Yeah. So LUPC. Yep. Used to be LURC. Yeah. And then it changed a few years ago 
before we get into all these acronyms, would you like Sorry. a water, coffee, or beer? Uh, or... I'd have a water. That'd be great. Perfect. Sorry. Just got to okay. get that out of the way. Yeah, we, that'd be great. We would chip games. We never even got to that point. We didn't. <laughs> no. Oh, jeez. And we were nervous whether we should <laughs> offer it or not, so it all worked out. <laughs> so, yeah, L- LUPC has been Thanks. around in you know different acronyms for how long? Uh, since the 70s. Um, Thank you. In, in the 70s, it... Um, came about to help provide some of you municipal like uh, planning and regulate regulations for the unorganized and the organized areas in Maine. So is that right around because that's right around when the whole clean air and clean waters started? Is it kind of was did they go together or was it separate? Uh, I'm not actually sure. I know that I, I think it, it came about, um, you know, because towns regulated by DEP and so they needed gotcha. to figure out gotcha. some way to do um, some planning for to allow economic development for natural resource resource based um, businesses but also keeping environmental protection and the u- uniqueness of that area intact gotcha. I'm gonna do a cliff notes version for our listeners they're pretty much like the planning board for I don't know like t3r9 or these places are way in the middle of nowhere. Totally. You act as that that point of reference, work through the permitting process. Yep, and we and we do the planning as well. Yep. So we have a planning group and a permitting group, and we work together to do exactly that. And you cover the whole state or is it broken up into sections? Uh, we cover the, so we cover 10.5 million acres. <laughs> Jeez, wow. Yeah, so about half the state, um, and our planning staff is in Augusta mostly, but we have five regional offices uh, from Ashland, East Millinocket, Bangor, Greenville, and Wilton. Um, those are the five regional All up offices. north, where it's unorganized. Exactly, and um, those offices have two permitting and compliance staffs, and those staff cover, like, exactly, from down east up to the county and wrapping around to the western Maine mountains. So did the wilton one move recently so it was in rangeley for a while yep. um and then when the, the department of Depressed. yeah when the department of transportation um read a they, they made a new headquarters for the, the that uh that region we um kind of worked out a deal and, and got a couple offices in that new building nice very nice now are your codes based on mostly dep guidelines state guidelines because i know what we run into a lot and i've learned you know sometimes a lot of times town rule supersedes state rule and can be a lot stricter, especially in shoreland zoning. So um, our uh, regulations are pretty much based um, on a little bit of the planning aspect, um, what was um, originated in um, the statute that created our organization. So we did adopt that we oversee the Natural Resource Protection Act like DEP does, but then a whole layer of zoning um, came into play. So that's how the planning and and the natural resource uh, protection kind of work together Um, because it's to the zoning was based on what was existing when um, the agency was created. So if it was forestry or agriculture, it was zoned for that. If it was commercial, it was zoned for that. And if it was around a protected natural resource, it was protected. <laughs> gotcha. Now, does LUPC only cover unorganized territories? Uh, unorganized and deorganized. So there are a few towns that have... Deorganized. Deorganized. Yeah. So there's a few towns. And if you ask me to list them, I will fail. They (laughs) failed the organization. (laughs) (laughs) So they they decided they'd rather, you know, with the, you know, population size, they'd rather um, pay into our agency to have us do the the regulatory. Oh, interesting. So small towns can go into... Yep. Deorganized. 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 What's the most yeah. organized, unorganized area? <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you worked for the LUPC? And how, I, did, how did you get into it? And yeah, tell us your path, your yeah. story. Yeah, it's a, so I started out um, in wildlife ecology major at University of Maine. I've always loved um, the environment. And um, from that, I um, was an environmental 
environmental consultant for like 10 years out of college. So um, I actually did a bunch of the wind tower work. We, uh, oh, okay. yeah, we, uh, I walked through the woods for a living. Um, it was <laughs> pretty in my 20s. That's so pretty awesome. it was pretty great. Um, and then eventually I decided I, I would like to not be um, away from home as much. And I, I went to uh took a little pay cut um and went to the state of maine but uh 40 hours of a week was lovely and um i worked for maine dep so oh, okay. i went in as a land licensing down in portland and then i i learned um a bunch through that and then i got promoted to biologists so i i started doing more um like field services stuff for them and and some enforcement um and from that i moved to the department of transportation environmental office she's got a lot of acronyms in there yeah yeah, yeah. um and that that's what happens when you move around state government right. and we yeah the environmental office of dot um shout out to them they're they are awesome with what they do i have a love for dot my dad <laughs> I retired 43 years. Oh, that's yeah. right. I think Bridge I knew maintenance. that. Yes, I knew that. And, and while we're playing this Maddie Dix game, um, do you know our friend Colin Clark from DEP? Yes. Yes. And yep. I want to shout out that you know our own Jen Reese from college. Yep. The yep. power of Maine. Man, no man. Man, oh man. Th that's how I got here. I, I emailed Jen. Any way I could get a shout out for LUPC. <laughs> What's fun? Careful what you ask for. <laughs> What's funny with our show is how serendipity happens because we're working on a project right now up in um, Cupsoptic. Helping yep. a client find some land, and he's got a couple lots, but each lot offers some different challenges. Yes, you know, so there's a lot of research going on. And, there is, you know, I think things have changed a lot up that in that way. Yep, there used to be that small town vibe of what I'm hearing with some of the rules, and now things have changed. So you got to do your homework. You do, and that was one of one one of the main things I was gonna try to get like out there to the public through this uh, podcast was um, each lot based on the zoning um, and the parcel size the parcel deed what was on the property pre-existing our rules or certain certain implementation of different different things um the good can, old grandfather rule that we love. <laughs> yeah. it, it it makes it so that it's not always just straightforward and sometimes like your neighbor was able to do something back a certain time and now maybe you need uh, you you need to check to see if you can do that and some things that um might seem like Oh, I can cut that tree down. Um, might be actually like you. You need to. You need to ask. You need to see. But so. I've seen it go both ways too, because there's a lot of things that can be done, and people just hear these rumors that it can't be done. Right. What I what we found with shoreland zoning, you know, if, if it's access or safety to the water, you can do a lot of things, but you have to go through the process. You got to pay the permits, and it has to be on file. Yep. And we and we do not have shoreland zone implemented in our. Um, uh, service area we have our own hundred foot protections and what you can do and we in our chapter 10 rules um, but it is a little bit different than shoreland zone um, good to know yeah timing's I, everything here. I know I didn't realize that <laughs> so what I have so a million questions say mr. Smith from Massachusetts comes up and buys 200 acres off from his buddy like how does he know yeah start from the yeah. beginning say the we bought a piece of land how do we know whether it's LUPC control or not controlled jurisdiction or town jurisdiction or organized territory. Because some people must slip through the cracks and not mean to. You know, oh, yeah. or, 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 we don't totally. need a permit. Oh, yeah. totally. Um, or thinking, oh, it's, we're not in a town. We don't need a permit. Yeah. And that's why why I'm why we're doing outreach. Um, where yeah, where does somebody start? So actually, we just had a a workshop with the Maine Realtors Association. That's a good place to, to start. talk with them to get them knowledgeable so that when they sell in our jurisdiction they can they can know and they can tell tell the new landowners like hey um this parcel is an lupc it's zoned as this what do you want to do like let's talk to them so that we're put, making a push to get that out there but um on our website is the map of our service area so if you're looking to um and what's your website? Um, uh, you just go, uh, you can just type in LUPC Maine on Google. Yeah. It'll bring you right there. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I know some of our listeners right now are probably scrambling like, oh my God, we never got a permit. So what happens if someone went through the process, built something, and then they find out they got to get that on record? Okay. Well, so we just actually um, are, so we're governed by a, a 
a board of commissioners and they actually wanted us to start um, balancing permitting and enforcement. Mm -hmm. So we actually have an enforcement uh, coordinator that we just uh, developed that for. And her job is to help those yep. people. Um, our number one, how we go about things is voluntary compliance after the fact permitting, like um, what, how can we bring, you know, anything into voluntary compliance? Um, that is our, our number one. Better late than never, like I yeah. would like to say. Yeah, and it, there, there, there could be a little bit of, um, normally it's three times the, the fee yeah. for, a, for um, it, as long as what you did is permittable. And if not, then we can have a bigger conversation. I might have paid double fees a couple times. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right, right. That's if somebody's it's, project. It's permittable. Got it, got it, got yep. it. I remember the first time going up north and seeing T2R9, and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world, but I just couldn't wrap my head around it. And that's just a grid system pretty much to, yeah. for unorganized territories. Yep, township and range. Yep. Township and range. Yep. That's what he and I stand I'm for. pretty sure. Oh gosh, if I said that wrong, it. Uh, I'm still I, I, new. I, no, I think. <laughs> I, I, I think you did. No, I think you I, did. But I'll we'll um, take your word for it. I have a uh, I have a family camp up in up in unorganized territory. So I've been Where going at? to this um, up on Junior Lake. Junior Lake. Up, uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of like down east, up, up past Lincoln, and nice. that, that's yeah. my new favorite area. that I'm not telling anybody about. Oh, it's horrible up there. Well, don't don't, ask her about don't it, then. go there. <laughs> Maggie, I'm I'm just fooling around. So the Morrow family um had a camp up has a camp up on is it nine mile Dequam? Yep, nine mile river. Or no right. nine mile bridge, St. John River. Way up in there. So you guys you're in all facets of the state. Oh yeah. Totally. I just I think it'd be really hard though for someone that bought land up there, like you know, but, at Uncle Henry's or something but to a know. A lot all of the that rules, is right? also leased land. Do you how does that, you know, because in the state of Maine, it's you need you know. There's a lot of paper land owned by large timber companies yep. where you can lease plots to have cabins and stuff. How does that affect? So, um, usually, if it's a large lease, like a large landowner, and they're in LUPC, they know, and they actually those large landowners, they are like the best steward stewards of the land, and they're like, hey, LUPC is a thing. Uh, go and they actually usually have the region um, staff's number already. Yep. So we don't actually have a lot of um, um, problem with people getting leases in our jurisdiction not knowing. And actually, large landowners like that will actually self-report if somebody has done something because they don't want it. But the, 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 the lease, so somebody leases a camp spot. Yep. They still go through LUPC, not through the landowner themselves. Right, and what they will do is they'll get permission. Yep. Um, through the lease, if they want to do something, they just get. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Something from saying, "Yeah, we we're gonna build a camp," and then like, and yep, that's that's fine. So what if it's um Indian territory? <laughs> I, I got oh. a million questions. So say it's a whole pond or something on Indian territory. Do you? The state will have any they will solve or anything. I'm not. I've just like, had to think about that. I know. And you're I'm really, not, yeah, you're really grilling. And I'm not quite sure because actually, uh, we actually our area is surrounded by uh, Passamaquoddy territory. Yeah. And what do you I, what do you it's think? Interesting. I bet I, they. I think it's sovereign, isn't it? I think so too. Well, no, because when we were doing the Sacord camp, they were saying that the Passamaquoddy land up the Wabanaki land up there, there were two different pieces to it. There was the like where the and there's a Little Round Mount Pond, yeah. But there was also down by Carabasset Valley. What's that track called? Oh, uh, what's that called? The, not the Birches. Um, anyways, narrow gauge on that side, but yeah. that has a different. It's almost like that has a different zone than than the other one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, you know, my stepfather Kyle's Penobscot Indian. So we thought when I after college, I was gonna try to like he's gonna get some land and I'd put a camp on it. And the rule was you go out and you stake your land out and then you send it into the island. And we stake some land out in the valley. So the, it's all private, you know, maybe 200 feet from 27 yeah. on each way. Mm -hmm. So we found a spot like in Spring Farms or uh, the other side of the bridge, you know, marked it all out, got, got our hopes up. And you're like, no, you got to go way up the chain of ponds. Oh. You know, that's more land that they use for logging and stuff. Gotcha. 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 That makes sense. Yep. And I don't, I don't, really, I can't really speak to, to that interaction. I haven't, haven't been here quite long enough. Don't, sure, don't know. Sure, sure. It'll all become familiar with it. We knew nothing about this. And this is a part of like this whole world we have that 
we didn't think about, but you know, codes and planning boards. And now we, we know a lot and, and we definitely didn't choose to. We don't know it all. We don't know it all. And sometimes <laughs> we, we think we know will. it all. We, we never don't. will. Yeah. No, <laughs> but it's you. all fascinating stuff. And if you don't know, you just make the calls, you know, Yep. call the state. Yep. Try to find the local the clearest uh, town office. Yeah. And um, for us, just call on our website. You type in LUPC Maine. It'll bring it up and it says regional offices. And then there's a map. And then it, you, you click on the map and it brings you to what region office. And you can call the staff if you can't. And they're a full-time staff. Full-time. It's not like some of these small towns where it's every other Tuesday nope. <laughs> type of Full, you know, every four, even hours or something. Forty like that. hours it's, a week. Yep. I still go back to the dump. The dump up in Rangeley. It's open. What is it? Tuesdays and Thursdays, six to eight. <laughs> so everyone wanted to go home, like work. You know, work four tens. So I'd have to stay to go to the dump at like Thursday night. Oh. And it wasn't yep. that. Not a bad problem to have, but like you said, <laughs> odd odd hours. Yep. 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 Nope, ours is is normal. And if they can't figure out which region they are, they can call our main office sure. um, i i field a lot of calls i think because my uh aa um, like towards the All top right. they're like um and i just direct direct people to staff yeah fascinating yeah now yeah. do you get people try not trying to but like where you have to send them to a town you know, if somebody calls up thinking it's LUPC. Actually, yeah, I we I had one the other day for um. Oh, now I'm gonna forget the. But basically, they were part of an island. Like they, I was like, no, you're not. You're you're not LUPC. You're you're part of. I, I can't remember which island it was, but it was like, nope, that's a that's an actual municipality. Like call the call. And the you town. better get it right because it's amazing how different codes can be from one town to the other. Totally. So amazing. And we do cover a lot of the coastal islands. Uh, oh really which is interesting oh. and some of the islands in moosehead yeah. so uh it's it, it is interesting yeah yep now you said lupc kind of got started or set up in the 70s mm -hmm. back then you know was has the focus shifted over the years now that there's more tourism and more people with you know cabins and stuff like that it's not as you know it's not as heavily a timberland you know, working for us type of situation. Has the focus of LUPC shifted at all or? Um, I don't think it has. It it has um, just grown with the times. Yeah. Um, and when, you know, different things like like solar development mm -hmm. or, or wind farms, like things where the planning department had to come up with uh, new ways to to allow in the right places those sort of developments. Um, so there is a rezoning process um, that folks can go through if it if it's a compatible use. Um, but it is it is supposed to be a planned, um, you know, a not planned not planned development. But it is supposed to be to to kind of keep everything balanced in the right right area. So. Well, I was just thinking, what if it's like a controversial issue, like 50% on one side, 50% on the other? On the side it, of what? The, the, whatever the issue is. Say, oh, oh you no, know, not, say, the, not the Say it's land solar, solar farms, but in unorganized territory, like who ha, normally it goes to a vote? So th is there a board that does that or? So a lot of, so rezonings um, go before our commission. So okay. it's a, a nine member board. Um, and we have monthly monthly uh, meetings, um, and yeah, the the staff. So we're we're the, their staff. We um, do all the background. We look at our regulations, see if it's compatible, and then the staff will write um, a decision document and they'll present it. Um, and sometimes the board like asks for more questions or or people request hearings and then there's sure. there's public hearings and um so there is opportunity yeah. when when folks want to be heard to um within within the time limits allowed if they get their requests in they can they can be heard by the board and yeah now is it looked at as a whole like as far as the different um districts or is it looked at individually? I mean, the board covers the the whole area, the whole state. I mean, that's yeah. or unorganized, not just to their own like small districts. But are there different are there different rules or anything for each district? It's all so there's different uniform. standards. Um, so Chapter Ten has a lot of um, different standards for 
um, commercial um, yep. or um, read chapter ten twice. <laughs> And it is, it is, um, I, as I can say, I can say this and just be honest, chapter 10 is, is bulky. It's, yeah. it's hard. <laughs> of course it is. Um, you know, it's because it's covering 10 million acres and yeah. all the different uses in one, in one, uh, rule. So, um, there is, sometimes I think I get to the right answer and I realize I missed a, like where it referenced something mm -hmm. else. Um, so luckily our, our, Region supervisors both have been there for a while. We have a lot of institutional knowledge, and a, and a bunch of our planners have been here for a while. So, we we can find the answer. Um, but uh, and here's the plug to that: where if people have questions, give us time because it might take us a little time. So it is hard when when folks call and say, "I need the answer right now," and and we we got to do a little digging and a little bit of chatting with each other. We got it right here. We're going to fire away. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. So I'm thinking about, um, so government oversight. Gover <laughs> the government lets each state do their own thing. It might have a little oversight on the decisions you're making. The, like, sorry. The, like, the... Think about the whole, you know, the whole United States as a whole. Mm -hmm. Are, are these rules the same for other states with unorganized territories? Or does the government like kind of let oh. you guys do your thing and then? I'm not sure about other. Yeah, I was just thinking like Bureau of Man Management out west and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't. There's no federal lands in the state of Maine, right? I don't. Sure. I mean, besides Acadia and the yeah. new national monument. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, and wildlife refuges. Oh, true. All right, all right. So there is, <laughs> there is. A... I got one last question too, if I can. The flagpole. Are you guys involved with that? I think they were trying to, if I understand correctly, they were trying to go. I love that. Thing. Um, the the town was trying. I went to, to... vote. It. Oh, so yeah. New York. I think I went to vote the other day. So people that don't know Columbia Falls, the wreath makers, right? The Morrill family, I think, is trying to make the world's largest um, flagpole and bus. memorial. <laughs> you bring this flagpole up any chance you get. <laughs> I think it's so cool. So the permitting process for a camp owner, mm -hmm. um, you know, so they've spoken with an LUPC representative, got all the information they need, filled out their application, submitted it. Mm -hmm. Is there any type of time frame? We we try for uh, 15 days, like determining like if if the application is complete, we'll either try to get the information or return it and, and tell you what what you need. Um, and then once we deem it complete, we we try to have a pretty fast turnaround. Yep. Um, with with uh, we're down half our staff, so um, we do ask for a little bit of patience. But we try to. That has been a goal. Public service um, and customer service has been a goal for a bunch of years. And then once the permit's complete, all the work is done. Is that it, or is there any follow up that needs to be done on the camp owner's part? There might be some follow up, and um, there is right in your permit. Um, read all the conditions when you get your permit. Chapter read 10. all the conditions. You don't have to read chapter ten; it'll all be outlined <laughs> for you. Um, cause, and then at the end, if there is any compliance actions that need to happen, it's right there. That the information is right there, and it'll tell you what to do. Well, I lied. I have another question. It goes yeah. with Chase. So, yeah. So who, like, is there someone to inspect? Like, <laughs> like in most times, you have a plumbing inspector that mm -hmm. tests, like in. Then test the building code. So is there someone does come and inspect that stuff or So that's really cool that you mentioned it because uh -huh, Maggie. <laughs> so, um the local plumbing inspector does have to sign off okay. on the HHE two hundred as part of the building permit. So that is one of the reasons why we have to return permits is because they haven't had oops, sorry, they haven't had the um the HHE two hundred form either um reviewed or inspected or, or the signature is missing. So yeah, yeah. But uh, to then finish is we do try to go out and do a foundation check on a subset of camps um, or buildings um, to to make sure it's in the right place, make sure everything is is um, compliant. Um, and there's also a it's is it called self inspection, where you send in photos of the completed work. There's yep. There's a there I are. I can't remember what it was called, but there's something where. No, I can't either. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Right when you guys walk out the door to come to you. But it is, yeah, and and like I said, that will be in your permit. Gotcha. That requirement will be in your permit. Gotcha. Yeah, so any questions along the way, reach right out to LUPC. Yep. Before you get started, make you know, find out if you're in LUPC, unorganized or deorganized territory yep. or town jurisdiction. And yeah. 
Yeah, reach out early. You're there to help. We I'm are. Gonna fill up that inbox and I have a bunch of questions. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a few fan questions, I believe. Okay. We're turning it back over to you now, Maggie. Our questions are done. Yeah, it only took like. How many, how <laughs> this is so fascinating and interesting. I was ready for you to be done. <laughs> yeah, and you want to know who else finds it really interesting? Your fans who want to ask questions. <laughs> oh, she's got you there. <laughs> she does. <laughs> Once again, Maggie, one Ryan's here. <laughs> I feel like I'm at like 30 now. Uh, you are. All right. Anyways, this question is uh, from Donald Weaver. With so many unorganized areas of Maine, most of which are pretty remote, how does LUPC stay on top of monitoring all the, those areas? That's a really good question. Um, it is... It is hard. It's hard to get out to um, every single area. Um, we also, we work with some of our sister agencies. If they see something, they let us know. Um, also, you'd be surprised the amount of people who are driving around and see something that concerns them and they let us know. And and that is one of the ways we, we check. But um, yeah, you could spend, they could spend all their time just driving through and, and um, so we, it is more based on outreach and, and people giving us a call. I think neighbors get nosier that the more secluded they are checking things out and like, of course, want to know what's going on yep. two miles down the road. Totally. You know, people have a hunting area or something they've had for years and got to protect it. Yeah. See something new. Yeah. Alrighty. And I'm not asking any more questions. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Me, me neither. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question is from at three underscore star hopes. What made you want to get into wildlife ecology and wetland science? Oh, that's cool. That's a cool question. Um, so actually my dad went to the University of Maine and was a, a wildlife ecology major. So I already had, I always had that in my head and I thought originally that I wanted to be a zoologist and go to go to like the jungles and then I realized that's scary and there's a lot of things that can kill you <laughs> and so I switched it to wildlife ecology um, and then going up through that I kind of realized I actually had more interest in, interest in wetland science and the ecology of like the frogs and the vernal pools and um, and even like the invertebrates in the wetland communities so I University of Maine has a lot of good cor courses on that so then I, I steered into that so yeah, it was, but it was, I mean, I was playing in streams, um, up on my parents, um, farm, uh, growing up and like messing with stuff and tromping around in the wet areas. Cause we, our property line was a bog. So I think it was just cause being out in the woods in Maine, we have so many wet areas. I just thought it was so cool. And now you're getting paid to do it. That's amazing. Now I'm getting paid to do it. Yeah. So, so that's all I have for questions. All right. Oh, that was oh, easy. We got some more. <laughs> <laughs> well, Audie, thank you so much. Very fascinating. Ah. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And again, if you have questions about LUPC, LUPC dot, or just do a Google search. Yeah, right? just, I didn't bring the, the website. Um, we are under the, the Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry, so DACF. Um, so, uh, but again, you just type in LUPC Maine, it brings you right there. Easy enough. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Well, guys, buckle your seatbelts because we're going to go tour the new store. How'd she get us down? That's a good employee. <laughs> <laughs> Looks so good. I know. Spring is in the air. The place is changing. Yeah, guys, what's going on? What are you guys doing on this side? Um, this is our new retail counter. So it used to be on the other side of the room. Now it's over here. Yeah, and it gives you, gives you a straight shot down through the whole new space. So there used to go into the barn there. No longer. That is now part of the woodshed. And yeah. So you want a tour? Check it out. It's this way. Yeah, if you haven't been in a while, now you gotta come in. Everything is different. But it looks like you're staying here forever. That's like the coolest thing. So we took the room from the um, lower part of the barn, yep. moved everything out here. Used to be a door right here, 
This used to be the old break room. Or the, I mean, it used to be the old kitchen. I can't wait on it. And now it really is the old kitchen. You've got old ice chest. We left cabinets. Opened up the cap, the top cabinets. Put in this cool slate sink. Um, got this down in Kangaroo kind of Bunk from Architectural House Parts. And then this change, right, Chase? Widen this. You know, it used to be a narrow little hallway here, new doorway out swinging and widen this one. Kept as much of the original trim as possible. Kept the wallpaper throughout. That was a big contentious piece, but it's holding the whole, all the walls together, the old plaster and labs. And that's very electric. Put in these great LED, these lights are fantastic. What a difference. This was a darkest room. It was. I still cannot believe how amazing it looks. A few changes and- And the red carpet's gone. That red carpet, Tom Daggett said, was from Sears and Roebuck in 1948. They paid $400 for it. And that, wow. Maybe 58. Where's the other one? Up to the back 40? I'm gonna save it. You should. And when the girls have a red carpet event, I'm gonna. Oh, nice. Don't tell Maggie. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and everyone's gonna ask where Ashley's table, the table is. We, we left that out in the barn area now and built the benches around it. Yeah, but all the same merchandise. New stuff's constantly coming in for spring. Isadora and Michelle. You know, Ashley, they're all looking for new products, bringing them in all the time, so... Store looks great, new merchandise. Come on in and check it out. All right, back to the podcast. We're coming, Maggie! All right, and now we are back with fan questions for Ryan and Chase. A lot of questions today. A lot of questions, a lot of answers. A lot of questions. Yeah, we are. Sorry. There's two questions that... We're we'll so scared of her right now. I know. That I think are exactly the same, so I got confused. Okay. Go ahead, you're both. You're so funny. Um, this question is from Cynthia Casper and maybe also John White. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you bring in an excavator to completely tear down a cabin, why don't, why doesn't the excavator drop the debris directly into a dumpster? It looks like to drop it nearby and then turn around, pick up the debris for the dumpster seems to be a waste of time. I've never thought about that, but good question. <laughs> yeah, geez, we should bring in a uh, Corey or Scott. Scott from Riverside. Yeah, I. I I've seen a lot of times, like structurally, they'll they'll there's certain points of a house they know where to push, yep. you know, and it's going to bring that side down. Sometimes there's a cellar hole, so they'll drive over it. Yeah, and I just think they like stay like do one thing, you know, stay on one thing, get the whole thing pushed down, and then pick and turn, pick and turn. And I think it even kind of true for us that if we have a dumpster nearby and we're just chucking stuff in, like imagine. There's a lot of dead space, and the dumpster fills up much quicker. Whereas if you kind of crunch it up and break it up pack small it. pieces, you can pack more in. Would be my guess. We totally got to call our excavator guys and ask them though. Yeah, it's got to be like about moving. Well, I'm thinking like I know at my brother's camp, kept a lot of dust down too because that was nasty, and the lake was right there. I don't know if they do that too to keep it all there. Yeah. Do you know try to not to like unsettle like make a big path. To the dumpster. Yeah. I'm really not sure, though. No, I'm not either. And then, like, the Vassalboro one, he, he tore that down. I, one Vass thing I know, oh, though. the Vassalboro one? Um, Ashley's friends. Bishop. Oh, yes, yes. Right, 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 right. And then up in um the Cobb camp. Yep. Yeah, I think it's to compact it even more. Because, mm -hmm. you know, like, if you picked up a wall and dropped it in, if it was at an angle... Right. You know, versus trying to smack, they don't want to smash it down in the dumpster. But we've done that, and that didn't end well. No. It blows the walls out, or the door won't shut entirely correctly. It wasn't yours, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, even when, like I said, even when we're hand loading a dumpster, you really do have to be conscious about space and how quickly it fills up. Uh, Dixie and Jedi worked, we worked for a guy that every night he would like put a top over it. Because that rain, I mean, he's not wrong. That rain definitely adds a lot of weight. True. But especially if it's wintertime and it freezes up. Yeah. You're paying to dump ice. We don't want that. Right. Good question. Yeah. I'll do some researching. We'll get back to you. Okay. 
Do you think they really had the same question, or is that just a typo? I don't think they really had the same question because it's like word for <laughs> yeah. word. But it's <laughs> no, it's it, quite, it is it's word quite for literally word. word for, it's the same exact thing. Uh, next question from Adam Schaefer. I have purchased the snapback blue hat with the KCC le leather patch. I have had it for over a year and I have noticed that Chase has gone through many of these hats. I know it's difficult to find a hat you really like and question whether it's going to be around in the future. This hat is my favorite <laughs> hat and I, I consider it. myself a connoisseur I of love snapback. This. But how does it feel knowing that you own the company that controls the <laughs> destiny of this hat? Adam, I'm just going to have a drink to that question. That's amazing. <laughs> Oh, the power is in our hands. It must be National <laughs> Question Day. Well, um, we have a friend that loves hats, Seth. Yep. And he takes them serious, and he has a crazy collection. But he loves the vintage, like, tall trucker hats. Yep. And I've noticed that Fletcher has become a flat brimmer. Oh, Fletcher. Yep. He was wearing, I think it was an Orono Brewing hat. And it was flat brim. He I, can pull it off. He's got it. He's he, got he it. He can. Yep. I grabbed it and I pretended like I was going to start shaping it. And he jumped up so fast. He he likes to keep those crisp. Some people can pull it off. He's a middle school boy. Well, I started wearing a hat again. I didn't wear a hat for years. And I started wearing one a little bit. It's kind yeah. of fun. I think because it freaks out Ashley. Yeah. No, but it's true. You find a good hat. You want to stick with it. Um, if I have any say over it, we're going to keep that KCC leather patch hat. I, those look sharp. They're a good hat. And our cabin, uh, cabin ca uh, master hat looked really cool. What was the one that trucker one? I'm trying to talk and think at the same time. 207 is heaven. We have yep. those hats. I like the trucker hat. Yeah. I like a nice. Guess yeah. how many dimples are left undimpled when I, your uncle puts his fat head in the hat? I feel like you have to add an extension. <laughs> Close. You probably have to cut them off. <laughs> Another hat and build it out even further. Zip tape it. No, I'm on two. That's not bad. You got room to grow. Two. It's fathead. <laughs> I'm proud of it, though. Anyways, that's another great question. And I mean, I won't make fun of your fat head, but seeing you in a hard hat at the screen <laughs> yesterday was it was noticeable how big your head was compared to everybody else. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I was cranking that thing open. <laughs> They ain't got to like have a barrel chest. Like I don't have some, some tiny little chest. I look like a weirdo. More than I do. Oh man! But you got to have fun yesterday. Yeah, we had a lot we of fun. We didn't even talk about that. Yeah. So yesterday, um, we went to read and read. Chase and I went down. Um, a good friend of mine, Scotty Marco, that Maddie Dix and I met at Farmington College Days. He works there now, and um, they started a apprentice program. Yeah. And that was like second class, and they would kind of want to surprise him. So for some reason, they thought. We're the ones. Yeah, they had us come down and talk to them a little bit. They let me get in that crane. That was pretty fun. Yeah, it was a 90 ton crane. Yeah, nine. They let Ryan try out a Swing around a little crane. bit. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's, we all do have really cool stories. And that, like the trades are so popular. There's such a need right now. And you know, our stories are interesting because we didn't think we were going to go there. And we ended up there. And we really, we really enjoy our jobs, you know. So. And they did mention if we ever needed a bridge or anything like that. No. Hit them up. So that could be a. A fun that would be cool. yeah yeah like if you're a young kid too in maine like free technical school now um is it southern maine technical or cmcc so yeah yeah look into these programs there's a lot of good things that are going on right now yeah check out read and reads apprentice program maggie you could be right down the road no thank you i could see you that no thank you You would brain oh, operator you no, would be amazing thank you. you have total control just kind of like now i don't i don't <laughs> want that at all <laughs> Oh, uh, we'll keep trying. We will. We will. I don't think you should. Yeah. But we do want to keep hearing from you. So if you've got a question for us, podcast at maincabinmasters.com. If you've got a project pointer and need some advice with a project you're working on, whether it's a cabin or not, podcast at maincabinmasters.com. And if you're our biggest fan, give us your phone number. We'll uh, maybe give you a call. I love these new, new things. <laughs> and we always want to thank our sponsor, Hammond Lumber Company. Are you skipping? No trivia are you tonight. Skipping my segment. Where, Where is it? No. Where is it? All right, oh, stop. Don't All right, let's skip go. my segment. Okay, sorry. We're gonna do trivia real quick, and then we're out of here. Let's do it. What was last week's question? I think you knew the answer right off. Okay. Nope. I definitely did. Nope. There's no way. Um, it was what beloved main game bird attracts me on oh, yeah. by going boom, 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 br br 
Burr, boom, burr, chicka, boom. With its wings. I know it's one. Can of, you get up there and like do that for us so we can really feel There's it. our TikTok no. dance. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> what does the main bird say? Hotty, hotty, hotty. It's either a pheasant or a partridge. I was going to say pheasant or partridge. What's the one that people. But I feel like it's the same bird, but I'm not a bird hunter. And... So I just stopped myself from saying the partridge is dumb because I don't want to get in trouble for shaming the partridge's <laughs> intelligence in this new day and age. <laughs> I'm learning, Maggie. I don't know that that's. I think it's a partridge. Maybe. Um, it is the partridge or the yeah. ruffed oh! grouse. Grouse, yes. Finally. Finally. Have you ever seen him do that? Yeah. I mean, I've heard it. I've seen the turkeys. Like when when a male turkey does his thing, like it's pretty impressive. Yeah. It does. It sounds like a drum beating, a thrumming. So what do you guys hear for like at our house? It's amazing. Like what you the noises you hear, like at night. Like there's some sketchy stuff. Like bobcats sound like little babies and like. We have a lot of owls. Oh, owls. Lots of owls? Yep. Not uh, coyotes occasionally. We Most, have coyotes in West Guyana. Mostly our neighbor's dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not what I heard. <laughs> How's the little puppy doing? Good. He jumped out of my truck window. I wasn't driving, but we were in the, I think he, I was parked at back 40 and he wanted to get out. So he thought he could just launch himself out and that's a pretty good that's huge so he's been limping around oh, lately poor guy. but i think he's kind of playing into it a little bit because he smile. knows it gets him sympathy so. does he go around in the morning does sarah still run every morning with the dog she runs with otis they go for walks he's not i don't know he's if, not there yet i don't know if he'll ever be a runner <laughs> he's so lazy i love it just so laid back you got the perfect demeanor <laughs> it's true <laughs> All right, what's this? Are you week? done with the interruption of my segment? We just can't stop talking. I can tell. <laughs> um, what was my question? Oh, if you are a proud person, you go with your head up and your tail where? What does that have to do with Maine? <laughs> I don't know. It's probably Maine lingo, but I've never heard it before. If you're a proud person, you go with your head up and your tail in the air. Over the bank and <laughs> tail wagon. Find out next week. <laughs> I'm just, I wonder how that relates to Maine, but yeah, Damn. maybe it's a way Maine saying. Obviously, it's a, why else would they put it on there? Who knows? You need to wear the hell's Wayne Maine bumper sticker in here. Yeah, we do. Just, who sells those? They don't make them anymore. Wayne General Store occasionally sells them. We're so off topic. I thought we were ending this bad boy. Oh no! You know, what was it? We were up to Fort Kent, and there's a, there, there's a Blaine Maine. Oh, is there? And so we make a bumper sticker. Where the hell's Wayne Maine? I don't know, but I know where Blaine Maine is. <laughs> no blame me <laughs> for not knowing. Please stop. Please stop. All right. With that note, we want to thank our sponsors: Hammond Lumber Company, Nelma, Hero Media Network, Kennebec Savings Bank. Thank you to our guest. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Ryan. Good times. And from the woodshed, we'll be talking to you. From the Woodshed has been brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp? Trust the quality. Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Kennebec Savings Bank, helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years.